soil test calibration is for establishment of turf grass mono stands by Turner and Waddington in the Soil Science Society of America Journal in 1983. Little information is currently available relating fertilization and soil fertility to turf grass establishment response. A field study was conducted on a Hagerstown soil to determine the effects of seed bed applications of phosphorus, potassium, and limestone on establishment rate and quality of mono stands of a Kentucky bluegrass, a chewing fescue, and a perennial ryegrass. Phosphorus applications range from 0 to 16 pounds of nitrogen. Remember, this was prior to establishment, prior to seeding. This was, you know, pre-plant incorporated. Potassium was applied from 0 to 30 pounds of potassium, and limestone was applied from between 0 and 240 pounds of limestone. The initial soil test levels at that location were a pH of 5.7, with about 25 to 30 parts per million of Bray-1 phosphorus. And the, the phosphorus and potassium were listed as low and medium to low, respectively, from the existing soil test laboratory. Phosphorus additions to the soil had the most important effect on turf grass establishment. The initial soil level of 25 to 30 parts per million was not sufficient for rapid turf grass establishment. Seedbed phosphorus applications in the range of 3 to 8 phosph uh, pounds of phosphorus per thousand resulting in soil, level, soil phosphorus levels of between about 60 and around 80 parts per million Bray-1 phosphorus proved to be most satisfactory in promoting rapid establishment as determined by turf grass chemical composition, ground cover, clipping, yield, and quality. So if you've ever heard apply phosphorus prior to establishment, there is some evidence to support that in this paper as one of them. The di differences due to phosphorus tended to diminish with time indicating that there were rapid establishment or where rapid establishment is not critical the 25 to 30 parts per million phosphorus spray one phosphorus in this soil may be sufficient to obtain satisfactory stands of the species investigated so in other words if you don't require rapid establishment even if your phosphorus is um, on the low end it's probably fine to grow it in if you desire rapid establishment on a low phosphorus soil using seeding of these turf grass varieties then the application of phosphorus can enhance or increase the rate of establishment if that's what you desire. The initial pH, potassium, and calcium levels were sufficient for satisfactory turf grass establishment on this soil. So here comes the information with limestone. You've, ever, you've heard, well, we got to apply limestone before seeding. You've got you to lime the soil. Liming is important. Well, in this paper, they showed that limestone applications did not affect ground cover tended to reduce the initial clipping yields and had little influence on turf grass quality. Slightly reduced sod strength and generally did not greatly affect tissue calcium levels. So lime either really didn't have an effect at all or had a harmful effect of turf grass growth in quality. Potassium applications either reduced or had no effect on the initial ground cover and had little effect on turf grass quality. This is something we've seen very consistent in literature. Potassium has usually no effect. It can have a positive effect in some cases, but it usually has no effect or a negative effect. Although tissue potassium levels was substantially increased by potassium applications, the tissue potassium levels of all three species on plots that did not receive any potassium were still much higher than the levels generally considered critical or deficient. So I'm going to show you a couple of graphs here. Well, they, they showed a lot of the, the data in graphs like this where you have yield on one axis, lime on an x-axis, and then phosphorus applications on the, on the other axis. And this particular graph is representative of much of the results where we have yield with no lime and no phosphorus being at, say, 30 uh, grams per meter squared. And as we apply lime, more and more lime, the yield declines. Okay, as we apply more and more phosphorus, the yield goes up, whether you apply a lot of lime or a little bit, or no lime. The greatest yield occurred with no lime and high rates of phosphorus. Okay, so phosphorus had a positive influence whether you applied lime or not. The greatest benefit occurred when there was no lime applied. Okay, that was with bluegrass. You see very similar responses with other turf grasses as well, where you have the yield from ryegrass, where you increase the lime, you see the yield go down. When you increase the phosphorus, you see the yield go up. Very similar. Okay, the greatest yield occurred with, with ryegrass. Where there was no lime applied, but high rates of phosphorus applied during establishment on this low phosphorus soil. For the most part, that is the results from across the board. With potassium, here you see potassium on percent cover. The potassium, as the potassium goes up, the cover percentage goes down. As the phosphorus goes up, the cover percentage goes up. 
So phosphorus, the short and skinny of this study is on low phosphorus soils the, during turf grass establishment from seed, the application of phosphorus pre-plant actually resulted in an increase in a percent cover and quality. The application of potassium and lime either had no effect or typically had a harmful effect on turf grass establishment and quality. The influence of phosphorus, although it was beneficial early on, dissipated very quickly. And after the turf grass was established, the increased rates of phosphorus or any amount of phosphorus did not continue to result in any difference. In other words, phosphorus was important during establishment, but did not have any beneficial effect after the turf grass was established. If you want the long form version of this video, I'll post a link for it up here. Thank you very much.